Praise the Lord, saints. We welcome you to Concrete Global Inc. Ministries, our broadcast. We want to thank you for joining us. Call your relatives, your friends, your neighbors. Let them know we are on the air, broadcasting live on YouTube's channel. Follow us, Concrete Global Inc. Ministries, Dr. Kiki, Michelle, Secretary Williams, and myself, Brother Carlisle E. Williams. Yes, we are broadcasting live. We are on tour and bringing you the service in the great city of Augusta, Georgia. Let's go to scripture. Matthew 20, starting at the 21st verse. Jesus said unto him, if thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, and he had great possessions. Then Jesus then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. I have read to you, Matthew 20, the 20th chapter, Matthew, starting at the 21st verse through the 24th verse. Let the Lord have a blessing to the reader and the hearer of his word. Let us go to the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day, a day we have not seen before. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the many blessings, oh Lord, the sunshine and the rain. Thank you for sheltering us in the time of the storms, oh Lord, and blessing us to have a roof over our head, oh Lord. Thank you for Carcade Global Ministries, oh Lord, as we reach out to others, oh Lord, and give, bring them a word sent from heaven. Heavenly Father, we just say thank you, Lord. Go into the hospitals, oh Lord. Heal the sick. Those uh, laying on their bed of affliction, Lord, Touch their body in a special way. We know you are still in the miracle working season, Father. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us. Thank you, Lord, for being there for us, oh Lord. Standing in your prayer, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for just honoring us, oh Lord, and blessing us and continue to bless us as we go forward and giving God all praises and honor, Lord. We thank you. Thank you, Lord, for blessing those, oh Lord, this dying of thirst, hunger, diseases. Lord, a special blessing on the people in Ukraine. We don't need war, Lord. We know you are in charge, Father. Touch those that are hurting right now, Father, they're homeless. Give them shelter, give them food, oh Lord, Father. The country is raving terribly, going in the wrong direction, oh Lord, over there in Ukraine. The Russians touch their leadership, oh Lord, touch our leadership in Washington, D.C., all those that in charge, oh Father, our president, oh Lord, on down, the cabinet, oh Lord. We want to say thank you for what you have done, what you're going to do in our lives, oh Lord. These are all the blessings in Jesus' name, the grace we pray. Amen and amen. Without further ado, we bring to you Dr. Kiki Michelle, Secretary Williams, and she come to you in a very own way, bringing you a message sent from heaven. 
Amen, amen, amen. We thank God for his love, his grace, his protection, his peace. We thank God for surrounding us uh, just because he He does. Uh, we, he could have given up on us and moved on a long time ago, but he loves us too much. And isn't it amazing that the same God who takes care of you at your physical address is the same God that takes care of others at their physical address? Like God is so worthy to be praised. Um, if I was sing a song today, it would be, it's another day's journey and I'm glad about it. It is another day's journey and I'm so glad about it. Today, I wanna briefly share with you what God shared with me. And um, I'll draw your attention please to Proverbs chapter 30 and verse five, Proverbs 30 and verse five. And it simply says, every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. If I could use for a subject to just frame this conversation, it would be shield. God is our shield. When you look in the Greek word of what shield means, that's where the majority of uh, translations of words come from is in the Greek, especially for biblical terminology. Um, in Greek, shield is theros. And theros is a shield large enough to provide full protection from attack, covering the believer from head to toe during hand-to-hand -hand spiritual warfare. So our scripture simply says, his word is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. So God is a shield and he's a mighty battle axe and he'll, he'll fight for you and he'll um, move on your behalf. But there's a condition in this particular scripture. It's not going to just be your protection and your battle axe and your shield if you don't trust him. We've got a, a deliverable that we have to do. We've got to trust him. Do you trust God's word? Are you putting time into reading his word? I know people don't want to carry uh, several books and uh, you know the Bible with them, but in this digital age, you can pull it up online. Uh, and, and the Lord is asking us to hide his word in our heart that we might not sin against him. So I've got to be familiar with his word. Um, we know full well if someone says something to us and make a promise to us, we're going to hold on to that forever. I remember my granddad, he's, even as a child uh, who's gone on, granddad newborn, uh, who said every Christmas, okay, I got y'all kids the first of the year. Got y'all kids the first of the year. So although it was mid-December, sometimes right around Christmas when we heard he was going to get us something big and fabulous, a gift of sorts, the first of the year, that's all we held on to. And just like a kid who would be given a promise and we're waiting on that promise to uh, materialize, the same is true with the word of God. God is saying, I've, I have given you my word. My word said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. My word say, even in the seventh trouble, I will be with you. No matter what comes against you, God said, no weapon formed against you will be able to prosper. He said, I made you, I created you, and my desire for you is that you'll prosper. God said, he wants us to be the lender and not the borrower. He wants you to be the head and not the tail. He wants you to be above and not beneath. His word hasn't changed, but we want to just take the good parts of his word and be uh, applying it and making it applicable to our lives and not all parts of his word. His word says that we must live holy and fully sold out lives to God. We must be fully committed to every part of his word. I don't believe that we just focus on the New Testament because the Old Testament is gone and dead. No, 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 no. All word of God is all Bible and scripture is the inspired word of God, which means he whispered his word into someone's ear who wrote it. And the word has life. I don't know about you, but sometimes I read scriptures and I, I could just feel something moving in me like, oh, my God, I feel the presence of God. So I'm sharing with you today. 
he said, my word is pure, which means there's no filler to it. Um, we live in a, in a society where most people want organic. They want a uh, full strength. People want things that uh, don't have a whole bunch of fillers in them. People want a whole bunch of things that uh, don't require additives. And so we've got to be in such a place that we believe the word of God. He said, I am he that healeth thee. I am going to make a way in the wilderness. That means you're going to get sick. If he's the Lord that's going to heal you, he's the one that's going to have to prove his word. People don't want to uh, take the word of God as it is. We want to take out pieces that are we feel like using. Um, that you're going to be blessed and going to get that house and that car and the money. and But we have to see that there's promises there for us, but you're going to gonna have to go through something. You're going to have to go through something. What does that mean? Uh, um, he said, I'm the lifter of the bowed down head. That means there will be times when you're down. There will be times when, when you're not in a fully uh, surrendered, uh, happy position. There's going to be times that you're in the valley of decision. That's why he's given us his word is pure. It's, there's nothing can be added or taken away from it. He said, I'm God. I'm God all by myself. I don't need any help. And he said, when I uh, command a thing to be so, it is. And, and, and I think sometimes we get it uh, confused that people who've been in our lives have misled us, have uh, uh, distracted us and deceived us. And so there's a, a, a pause to trust when it comes to what we're being told and what we're hearing. But in this session, God is saying, trust my word. My word is pure. I've spoken. It is so. I'm going to be your shield. Now think about a shield. I know we're in 2022 and we've all uh, had experience with wearing the mask or refusing to wear the mask or wearing it halfway or wearing it wrong or, or, or not wearing it at all. But the, the mask, for example, is a sort of shield. Think of God putting a complete shield around every part of you. There will be darts, there will be weapons, there will be missiles, there will be words, there will be malicious acts sent your way. But God said, I've covered you by my precious blood and my word has gone out that I will be your shield. And we have to understand I'm your buckler. And I'm your protection, that you may see something coming your way. But God said, I won't let it be prosperous. I won't let it harm you. I won't let it hurt you. I won't it let it heal, uh, uh, kill you. I will not let it distract you from the God-given purpose. As you move from level to level in anything that you're doing, your industry, your ministry, your personal growth, your life in general, your plans for the future, there's going to be steps that you have to take to get there. And sometimes people just want to flip flop to the top and say, oh, I arrived. But guess what? There is beauty in the struggle. There is beauty in the task of what you go through. And I have seen God put his word into action. And it's something that you can bank on. Just like he said, pay your tithes and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord, and I, if I will not pour, open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there not be room enough to receive. The 10% that he gives us, he already owns. He's seeing if he can trust us with what he has given us in an effort to multiply us. He could very well ask you for the 90%, but he asked you for the 10% just as an act of obedience. And just like in that scripture of promise of giving and he says, prove me now herewith, saith the Lord, that if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there will not be room enough to receive. His word is pure right here in Proverbs 30 and 5. He said, I am going to be your battle axe. I am going to make you victorious. Matter of fact, you are already victorious. You've already run, won the war. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Well, what does that mean? And, and there's a scripture, it's, it's through the pulling down of strongholds. It's, it's through the things that you and I cannot see with our natural eyes, except God gives you discernment to be able to see the spiritual along with the natural. You have to understand the trials and tribulations that you are up against or soon to face or have victoriously faced. It was always fought in a spiritual war. 
It's always fault in the spiritual realm. So I can't get mad at my brother and I can't get mad at my sister per se for what they say and do. God is the one fighting the battle, helping us fight it in a spiritual realm. You may say, well, I don't even really know anything about the spiritual realm. How do I fight in the spiritual realm? You fight by tempering your attitude, making sure your, your actions and your words line up to word, God's word. You also need to make sure that you're living a clean and pure and holy life. Pure means that way is fully, it's fully clear. It, it's, it's untainted. I can't do certain things uh, twice a week on church days and do and live like a hellion the rest of the week. Pure means found without sin in this respect, without reproach. Nobody can say that was you over there doing such and such because it wasn't you. Nobody can say that was you saying such and such because it wasn't you. Living a pure and holy life is reflective of God being able to drive and being in charge and being the leader of your life. So we've got to Line up to his word, do what his word says do, and trust him to do what he said he would do for us through his word. And God is saying, guess what? I am your shield. People will fight you. They'll come against you. They will try their best to silence you. But God said there will not be death in this season. There will not be failure in this season. There will not be lack in this season. There will not be a sense of not knowing where to go and what to do. God said, your steps are ordered and I, God, declare it is so. You will walk in my name. You will talk in my name. You will function in my name. When you present yourself, people are seeing a presentation of God. God is saying, you must make sure that you're presenting yourself as a fully sold out, humble, vessel of God. It ain't about you. In this season, God has said, I'm going to be moving the, the least to the to the largest. I'm going to be moving those who, who've been looked over to the front. Those that will last, they're going to be in the front of the line. He's saying those that were, were begging and borrowing will now be lenders. Those who were looking for work are now going to be looking for people to hire. Those who were lacking in finances, you're going to have overflow. Those who've been sick in your body, God is saying, I am healing you supernaturally. Hallelujah. Those who've been having issues in their mind, God said, I've been your mind regulator. Hallelujah. God is saying, I, God said, am your shield. So this tells me whatever I am facing right now has already been resolved. He's my shield. It might look like darts are being thrown at me because they are. But God is also saying, I'm your shield. I'm your protector. I'm your buckler. I've declared you successful. I've declared you victorious. I've declared you a winner. And all the negative things that have happened to you in your life and all the adversity that has happened. God said, I did not cause those things to happen, but I, I allow them so that you can have a testimony as to where you've been and how God can bring you through. I've allowed those things to shape you and such that as you move through, there was things that you had to develop in those trying times. God said, I'm your shield. So my friend, my brother, my sister, men, women, children of God, understand God is not going to force himself on us. His word is true, but if there's any unbelief or doubt, then that's a sign of no faith. That's a sign that you don't fully trust him. So you've got to decide in your mind, I'm going to trust what God says. I'm going to resist what the devil says and does. And I'm going to realize that my shield and my buckler, my strength, my guide, the lover of my soul, God is going to make sure that I am well. God is going to make sure that I survive. God is going to make sure that every satanic attack of the enemy is thwarted, destroyed in the name of Jesus. God is going to make sure all the negative and evil things that have been talked over your life for years, I'm going to reveal the truth. Hallelujah. God said, this ain't even about you. This ain't even about you clearing your name. He said, I have to perform my word. You've moved on, but God said, I've been still fighting these battles to for you behind your back in your in your in your um in your favor so those who have challenged you and those who have stood against you and those who have counted you out for dead and those who have plotted and planned your demise god said i am going to work a miracle for you 
such that your haters and naysayers will know that you are a blessed child of God and no weapon formed against you will prosper. And I tell you, some people who've done you wrong, they really wish that they can just die. God will not allow them to die. They must live to see his hand upon your life. They must live to see the glory of God on your life. They must live so that they can have an opportunity to seek salvation. But no, they're not going to be able to die in this season. Your enemies, your enemies, God's going to, going to give them a little longer to live. He's going to promote their health a little longer so they can see the salvation at work in your life. And they can see God's hand at work in your life. He is your shield. And never, ever, ever wish any evil upon someone. You are too blessed and, and too uh, focused and too sold out to God to even worry about trying to get somebody back. That's the mind of a believer. You don't plot and plan how I'm going to get them back and, oh, I'm going to show you. I know we, we play like that and, and we, we make jokes like that, but in real life, that is nothing that a child of God would ever put their hand to do. God said, take your hand off of it. They will wish they had paid you. They will wish they hadn't scandalized your name. They had wished they had treated you better. They had wished, but God's gonna let them see the glory of the Lord on your life because you're covered by the shield. My friends, it is imperative that we all must be born again. We must all stand before the great judgment seat of the Lord Jesus Christ soon and very soon. And if he should call for us individually by the grave or he should call us collectively in the rapture, we must still give an account for the deeds done in our bodies, the words we said, the way we treated others. Why aren't you living a holy life? Why did you follow the crowd when I told you to turn left and you turn the other way? God's saying, we've got to give an account. What I'm suggesting, we all here as believers, we want to hear the Lord say, well done, my good and faithful servant. I'm proud of you. Come on in. You want him to say, that's my son. That's my daughter. Come on in. We don't want to hear, hmm, I'm checking the books. I see, I don't, I don't see it. Your name is, who are you? I never knew you. Depart from me, worker of iniquity. We don't want to hear that. But here is the, the, the training ground. Acts 238 is your friend. We must be baptized, fully immersed in water in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins. Remission means to fully remove your sins. You're born into sin. I don't care how nice and good and perfect you think you are. The fact that you are breathing and living on this planet, you were born into sin. Thanks to um, the fall of man, thanks to um, just the whole story of creation. We are born into sin. We're shaping in iniquity. And we have to understand we are born again through the washing of water that washes away our sins. And then people say, oh, it's too hard to live the right. Oh, it's hard. No, 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 no. If you think being saved is hard, then you have the heart of a backslider. Let me just say that. I hear uh, well-known uh, leaders saying how hard it is to be saved. Well, they're actually contradicting the word of God there. It's not hard to be saved. It's, it's When you're saying it's hard to be saved, you're saying it's hard to do right and live right. That doesn't add up if you're a man, a woman, or a child of God. So when I'm living for God, I'm doing everything possible to please him. I'm praying, I'm seeking him, I'm making godly choices, and then I'm also running on to see what the end is going to be. So we want to make sure we got it right. Trust me, on a day of judgment, it's too late to be pointing fingers. Oh, well, but elder so-and-so said, well, well, well bishop, well, 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 event, well, sister said. God said you are all without excuse, man, woman, boy, girl. Get right, church, and let's go home. The Holy Spirit that he gives you through Acts 238, being blood washed in his water in, for the remission of sins, in Jesus' name, he's going to give you his spirit that's going to help you to do right. You can't do it by yourself. But if you're saying it's hard, that means your Holy Spirit is dormant. That means you're not fully sold out, committed to the ways of God. If you're trying to live this life for God on your own without the Holy Spirit, you're going to keep making mistakes. It's impossible to do it. He's going to lead you. He's going to guide you. He's going to be a comforter. He's going to show you the way. He's going to help you so that you can avoid mistakes. He's going to say, oh, no, nah, you shouldn't do that. Oh, well, go ahead. He's going to lead you and guide you. You've got to listen. Got to be willing to listen and follow directions. 
And then he said, guess what? This promise uh, to you, you're going to reign with me forever and ever and ever. As to you, I love you. I love every child that you have, every child that they have. But as many generations as God should call, your grandparents, your great-grandparents, they have to meet God on their own. They have to have met God's conditions on their own. We can't follow certain things just because mom and them did and daddy and them did it. When God gives you access to the truth, you are responsible for that truth when you know it. Mom and them and grandma and grand granddaddy and them may not have been exposed to certain things and they'll be judged on what they were exposed to and what they knew. So never sit in a place of, of, of judgment of others. Do what you can for what God has given you with. There's another level he's taking you with the information he's provided you with. Act upon the resources that you've been given. So please feel free to reach out to us if there's questions, comments, or concerns that you may have. But get yourself a relationship with God and understand he is not through with you. He said, I am your shield. God bless you.